Jackson, in his reflections last week, presented uh, an essay, but it was still preaching. Today, I present readings from Leo Tolstoy's writing from the late 19th century, the 1880s, entitled, Where Love Is, There is God Also. You'll recognize some of the scriptures from the reading. They are mostly from the book of Luke, but they are provisions uh, that uh, we call in Luke the Sermon on the Plain, which is similar to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which of course I just finished a sermon series on. And in fact, one of the key verses that you will hear is Luke's parallel to our last two sermons in the Sermon on the Mount. So let's hear now Leo Tolstoy, where love is, there is God also. In a city lived a cobbler, Martin Audovich. He lived in a basement, a little room with one window. The window looked out on the street, but all Martin could see were the shoes and the boots of those who passed by. But Martin recognized people because, you see, he had lived in the city for a very long time. And there were basically no one whose boots and shoes had not been in Martin's shop. Because, you see, Martin had plenty of work, for he was a faithful workman, used good material, didn't charge exorbitant prices, and he kept his word. Martin suffered greatly in this life. All of his children except one died in infancy. And then his wife died, leaving him with a three-year-old son. Martin made arrangements to take care of his beloved son, Kaposhka. But shortly after he began to help his father in the cobbler's shop, his son died. Martin fell into a deep depression and became very despondent. He gave up on God and spent his time questioning God why these things had happened to him, and most of all, why was he still living when his younger son had died. One day, a holy man came to Martin's house and gave the cobbler some advice on how to live for God. Martin asked the holy man, how do I do this? And the holy man said, Christ taught us how to live for God. Do you know how to read? Then buy a New Testament and read it. It's all there. So Martin went and he bought a New Testament. He brought it home intending to read it on holidays. But when he started reading, it so moved Martin that he began reading daily. These words kindled a fire in Martin's heart. At times he would become so absorbed in his reading that the kerosene in his lamp would burn out and still he couldn't tear himself away from the reading. From that time, Martin's whole life changed. His life became quiet and joyful. In the morning, he'd sit down to work, and after he did his allotted work, he'd get up and go to read his New Testament. The more he read, the more he understood, and the brighter and the happier his heart became. Late one night, Martin was reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. If someone slaps you on one cheek, then turn to him the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do as I say? As everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice I will show you what they are like. 
They are like a man building a house who dug deep and set a strong foundation on the rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and don't do them is like the man who built a house on ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and the destruction was complete. Martin read these words and joy filled his heart. He thought to himself, asking, is my house built on the rock or on the sand? It's well if on the rock. It's so easy when you're alone by yourself. It seems as if you've done everything God commands. But when you forget yourself, you sin again. Yet I struggle on. Help me, Lord. As Martin was thinking, he continued to read, and in chapter 7, these words caught his attention. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came to your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet her feet my feet with her tears, and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Martin finished reading these verses and thought to himself, You did not give me any water for my feet. You did not give me a kiss. You did not put oil on my head. Again, he became lost in thought, wondering, it seems the Pharisee must have been a man like me. I too have thought only of myself, my cup of tea, my food, my clothing and my shelter, how I might be warm and comfortable, but I don't ever think about my guest. You see, the Pharisee thought about himself, but there was not the least taking care of his guest. And who was his guest? The Lord Jesus himself. If he had come to me, would I have treated him any differently? Martin rested his head on his desk and fell asleep. Then he heard Martin. Martin started from his sleep. Martin, who is there? Martin. He turned around, glanced toward the door. He didn't see anyone. So he dozed off again. Then he plainly heard, Martin, ah, Martin, look tomorrow in the street, for I am coming. Martin awoke, arose from his chair, began to rub his eyes. He couldn't tell whether he'd heard this voice or whether he was dreaming. So he turned down the lamp and went to bed. <clears throat> At daybreak the next morning, Martin rose, prayed to God, <coughs> set a kettle of water on the stove, put on the cabbage soup and gruel put on his apron and sat down at the window to work. While he was working, he kept thinking about all that had happened the day before. He was looking out the window and he saw the feet passing by and then he saw an old man. He recognized him as Stepanovich, a neighboring merchant's house guest who lived there for no rent in return for helping the house porter with maintenance of the building and the area around it. Stepanovich was shoveling snow, and it seemed like he got out of breath, and he stopped. He was shivering. Martin sewed about a dozen stitches and then thought, I should invite him in. So Martin taps on the window, waves, Stepanovich to come in. He comes in and Martin gives him coffee and the two sit down to converse. 
Stepanovich enjoys the warmth and he finishes his first cup and Martin notices that he seems to want another. So he offers him another cup of tea and Stepanovich accepts it. Martin says, drink more for your good health. You see that I have an idea when the Lord was on this earth, he disclaimed no one. He had more to do with the simple people. He always went to see the simple people. He picked his disciples from the poor, the working class like you and me. He said, blessed are the poor, the humble, the kind, the generous. Stepanovich forgot about his tea and the old man was moved to tears. He was listening as the tears rolled down his face. Come now, Martin said, have another cup. But Stepanovich made the sign of the cross, thanked him, turned his glass down and rose to leave. Thank you for treating me so kindly and satisfying me, mind and body. Martin said, come again anytime, always glad to see you. Stepanovich departed, Martin went back to work, kept glancing out the window as if he was looking for someone. People were passing by and then he saw stockinged feet go by, heard a child crying and he bent down to look up and he saw that it was a young woman not dressed properly for the cold and she and her baby were struggling. The child was crying. The woman was trying to pacify it, but was unable to. He invited them in. The woman was astounded that this old man would invite them in. He offered the woman a seat near the stove, encouraged her to get warm and to nurse her baby. And she said, but I have no milk for him. I haven't even eaten myself today. So Martin got up got the cabbage soup and fed her some of his soup, took the child from her and tended to the child while the woman ate. And she explained, you see, I'm a soldier's wife. My husband left seven months ago and I've heard nothing. I tried to uh, hire myself out as a cook and make a little money. I've tried being a wet nurse, but no one will hire me because they say I'm too skinny. This is the third month I haven't really had a place to stay. I've been to the merchant's wife where a young woman I know lives and they promised to take us in. I thought that would take care of it, but she said, come back next week and we'll discuss it. Thankfully, my landlord right now is letting us to stay. So Martin went over, got an old coat, gave it to her. The woman looked at the coat, looked at the old man, burst into tears and said, May Christ bless you. He must have sent me to your window, for otherwise surely my child and I would have frozen to death. Martin smiled and said, Indeed, he did that and told her of his dream, how he was waiting for Christ to come visit. That day the woman went away. Martin still remembered the window, went looking out the window, and he saw an apple seller woman chasing a boy, and they were tussling. And he went out as she was scolding the boy, screaming at him, saying that she was going to have him arrested for stealing her apple. Martin tried to calm them down, pulled the boy away from her and said, I'll give you an apple. Takes an apple from the woman's bag and says, I'll pay you for it. Martin and the woman got engaged in a conversation about how all the scamps in the town were being spoiled. And then he turned to the boy and said, I saw you take the apple apologize and ask for forgiveness. The boy broke down into tears, begged for forgiveness, and the woman forgave him. The boy offered to take her bag of wood chips she had been carrying along with the basket of apples and carry it 
home for her. The woman nodded her head, put the bag in the boy's back, and side by side they passed along the street. The woman even forgot to ask Martin to pay for the apple. Martin returned to his shop. As night fell, he remembered the voice from the night before and wondered why Jesus hadn't come to see him as he'd promised. He got his New Testament down from the shelf and began to read. As he read, he looked around and saw in a dark corner a shadowy figure as if someone was there and he heard a whisper in his voice, Martin, ah, Martin, did you not recognize me? Who? exclaimed Martin. Me, repeated the voice. It was I. And suddenly Martin saw Stepanovich appear. He smiled and then vanished. And then Martin saw a woman and her little baby. They smiled and nodded his way and vanished. And from the dark corner stepped an apple woman and the boy, hand in hand, smiled and vanished. Martin's soul rejoiced. He crossed himself, put on his spectacle, and began to read where his Bible had opened. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. And then down at the bottom of the page he read, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And Martin understood that the Savior had indeed come to visit him that day.